We're going to talk about antacids today and uh, a new side effect that is it's very important for you to be aware of. So we'll uh, end the video with what we already know and have talked about in the past about antacids, but let's start with the new stuff. And that is that your stomach is not the only acid secreting part of, of your body. You have parts of your cells are called lysosomes, but they make acid too inside your cells to uh, act as a sort of a cleansing of sort of sweeping the garbage away. And um, these lysosomes were looked at in research uh, by in the journal Circulation Research. And what the um, researchers did was they looked at a part of the body called your endothelium, which is all over your body, but it's a single layer of cells that you find uh, lining organs, particularly blood vessels. So uh, there's a lot of areas of our body that is just this lining is literally a single layer of cells, and it's the same thing in our gut. Um, but again, what these researchers looked at was was realizing, hey, we're <laughs> we're using a lot of these antacids and are they affecting other acid secreting parts of the human body? So again, they looked at this, the endothelium, the single layer of cells, and what they found was that the lysosomes that produce acid in those cells uh, indeed was compromised to a scary degree. So here's what happened is that again, the acid is secreted to kind of cleanse and purify the cell, keep it young, and so, the opposite happened with the lack of acid due to taking proton pump inhibitors, and that was that the cells aged faster. They got toxic and they aged faster. And what the researchers came to the conclusion was this was particularly leading to an increase in the risk of heart disease, kidney failure, and cognitive decline or dementia. So your brain is not working, you can't think clearly, etc. So we already know heart disease is our number one killer. Um, this is aggravating it, it's getting you there sooner. So heart failure, kidney failure, and dementia. Scary. And I really want you to share this with others because believe me, if it's not you, and or somebody you know, you absolutely know somebody who's on an antacid. If it's not yourself, um, you, you, you know somebody, because statistically they're used so much, whether somebody's taking it over the counter or, or they have it on a prescription. Um, and again, the, the prescription says when you, when, you get your, um, when you get your prescription from the drugstore, it says you should not take this longer than two weeks. Yet, Time and time again, we run into patients who not only have been taking their uh, PPI for months, but years, sometimes a decade plus that they've been on this. So imagine the accrued effect. So this is a hazard that is so easily handled, and, and that's something we should talk about for a moment, is how we, how we handle acid reflux. Because your stomach, which sits uh, below your rib cage on your left, is, is a bag of acid by design. It's supposed to be a bag of acid. We just heard what the little lysosomes do with their uh, helpful acid. So your stomach's acid is produced by cells called your parietal cells. And what does the acid do? It, it helps break down your food, setting you up for the next stage, which is when uh, the contents of the stomach go to your small intestine, where a lot of uh, the absorption and breakdown of food occurs. Uh, also, the acid acts as a purifier, just like we talked about earlier, such that any bacteria or parasites that were in your food, um, those get killed by that highly acidic environment. And the acid helps set you up for the absorption of cert certain nutrients. And that's why what we know with PPIs as regards stomach is that the lack of calcium absorption is going to put you at risk for osteoporosis. We also know about kidney disease um, associated with PPIs from the stomach perspective, but now we've learned about dementia, heart disease as well, and where that's coming from. So again, uh, I want to, I, well, I want to finish up with what we do about it, because as I started to say earlier, your stomach's a bag of acid by design, okay, uh, by a very healthful design. What's not supposed to happen is that that bag, your stomach, is not supposed to be compressed such that it's forced to shoot its contents up your esophagus, you see? And that's when you get heartburn and GERD, because that acid's not supposed to 
be going that way. It's supposed to be in your stomach, churning your food around when you eat, and then the secretions of the stomach go to your small intestine and enzymes work on it there. Your food is digested and delivered to all your cells to keep them healthy. That's the design. Um, so it's, it's not that the stomach is being bad or acid is bad. It, acid is wonderful. It's just supposed to stay within the stomach. So the simplicity is not the, is not the PPI. It's not the over-the-counter Tums or what have you. It's saying, okay, stomach, what's aggravating you so much that you're being forced to squeeze and, and shoot the acid upwards? And th that truly is the simplicity. And it's not hard to fix. It's truly not hard to fix. Please share this with others because so many people are taking these drugs thinking, hey, makes me feel better. It's all I know, you know, my heart, I can eat more food, uh, I can eat foods that used to bother me, um, and make the acid, you know, irritate. So all they're focusing on is, is what they feel in their esophagus, which, fair enough, that's, a, that's legitimate, but the trickle-down effect of what that's creating, that's what's important to know, and these are dangerous drugs. So what do we do here at Root Cause? We find out why that stomach is spasming. Now certainly, what goes into your stomach, food, we do commonly find that somebody's eating something that they're having a reaction to, and we figure that out. Also, you can have inhospita inhospitable bacteria in your stomach that are creating the issue, but then the stomach is not just affected by what's going into it, the food, but it's, it's affected by its environment. So the stomach down, you have as I mentioned, the small intestine, you've got liver and gallbladder on the other side, you've got the pancreas on the same side as the stomach, then you've got small intestine, large intestine. So it's there's quite a lot of organs in, in that vicinity of the abdomen. And as there is inflammation and malfunction occurring, um, there can be what's called intra-abdominal pressure. So within your abdomen, pressure increases and that can force the stomach upwards. So it can get uh, squished from something uh, coming into it, your food, that, that's annoying it and it's spasming because of that, or it can also be forced to spasm and, and, and compress because of what's happening below it and around it. So we simply assess what is occurring and, and sometimes it's a little bit of both of these scenarios. Um, and so we just address it and truly it's for us very, very easy to get people off their antacids off their PPIs because it's just restoring normal function to the stomach and the digestive tract. So yes, you have to have the right tools and, and really figure it out to resolve it, but it's not difficult and it doesn't require surgery and it doesn't require drugs and you can get off these dangerous drugs because I think we can agree that if someone handed you an antacid and said, hey, you know, this is going to give you some temporary relief, but it's going to speed you up to heart failure, kidney failure, and dementia, I think most people would have a second thought, don't you? So um, please share this video if you know anybody who is taking an antacids or, or you think might benefit from this information. We, we appreciate you sharing because that's how the word gets out. And this is a very important topic. Um, you can definitely reach out to the clinic for a consultation and, and like the video and subscribe. I hope you found this video helpful. If you want more on this topic and others, click here.